Kabinda X. Hi everyone, welcome back to another CAE tutorial with Kabinda X. This model simulates a cooling system consisting of a pipe network and we'll use ComSol Multiphysics to conduct this simulation. Key points to consider are our physics, heat sources, material properties, thermal effects, geometry, and constraints. In relation to our COMSOL implementation, specialized interfaces are used to model a couple of physics of pipe flow, pipe mechanics, and heat transfer in pipes and global definitions parameters and geometric coordinates we'll import these into our model you'll have access to them and the link would be in the description of this video let's jump over to Comsol Multiphysics and get this done Let's create a new model Z for the space dimension. We're going to use 3D and we're going to navigate down to structural mechanics. We're going to expand that. We're going to go all the way down to fluid structure interaction. Expand that. Then all the way down to fluid pipe interaction fixed geometry. Select that. Add. And we're going to add our study under general studies, stationary, and then click on done. Now let's import our global definition parameters. So let's click on parameters. We're going to load that. So you just navigate to where you have it stored. And this one right here, global definitions, pool and pipe. I'm going to use a text file. They are also a CSV file, but I'll just use a text file. Open. So we can expand this a little bit. There is our global definition parameters. And now let's go to our geometry. Let's right click on that. More primitives. Let's select polygon. We're going to load our coordinates. And we're going to start with. The, the main so pulling pipe pipeline stress main click on that let's go down to the bottom where we have selections of resulting entities we're going to check this box here for the resulting object selection for the cumulative selection we're going to create a new one and we're going to name that piping main Click OK. And you're going to repeat the process. And let's import the inlet. So let's go to the inlet. We're going to scroll down and we're going to click on new. And we're going to call that type in inlet. But oh, let's make sure we select the resulting objects selection. Okay. And now let's create another. And this would be the outlet. So let's go down. I'm going to check this box. New. And let's call this one piping outlets. Okay. And we're going to create another one. Polygon. And this one will be the heater. So this box, new. And we're going to call that one piping heater. Okay, 
So here is our geometry. Let's take off this grid and then zoom a little bit and just scroll just to explore and have an idea what we have here. That looks good. So we can just go back to home. Now that we've created our geometry, let's save our project. So you can save it anywhere you want to. I'm going to save mine in here and then I'm just going to give it a name and save. Always good to save a file while working. So now we're going to create partitions for certain edges to add points where the pipeline will be mechanically supported. Okay. So let's navigate to our geometry. We can just right click here and where we have booleans and partitions, we're going to create partition edges. So here, let's select paste selection and we're going to select a few points from polygon one. Here they are. Okay. Now let's enter relative arc length parameters. So here we'll key in 0 0.25. This one will key in 0 0.5. And this one. That should be 0 0.75. Now let's repeat the process the geometry, partition edges, and for this one, it's going to be these values here. Okay, and for the relative arc length parameters be one third and this one will be two third okay and we'll create another one and we're gonna key in these values for this one right here okay Now we need to create the work pane and the corresponding boundary coordinate system to be used in the support definition. So let's define that work plane. So we can right click on geometry and select work plane. And for the settings of our work plane we need to look at the plane definition and the plane type we're going to change that to vertices and for the first vertex we're going to click on, on point two so the best way to do that rather than scrolling through here which might take some time let's come to our selection list if we don't know where our selection list is close it come to window and selection list and it will show up here all right so we need to select point two on the pair tree so let's go down to pair tree and select point two so that would be this point right here and let's add that now for the second vertex we need to activate the selection and we only need point 25 and that is under page 3 as well so point 25 right here and let's add that and finally for the third vertex let's activate selection 
and we on the pear tree this one here pear tree in brackets tree we're going to select point one and add that as well now let's click on build all objects okay and let's go back to our model builder let's zoom to extends let's now navigate to definitions right here or you can choose it from the toolbar but i just find it quite easy to just come here and right click coordinate systems and let's choose a system from geometry right here and under system for geometry where we have work planes right here we're going to choose work plane one Now we need to define variables for the pipe in the diameter for different parts of the pipeline. Let's navigate to definitions right here. Select variables for the geometric entity selection. Let's choose edge and let's select pipe in main for the selection and here for the variable names let's type the i d1 which is from our global definition parameters the unit should be d1 unit m and description would be inner diameter okay so that's variable one let's duplicate this and we are going to change this from piping main to piping heater and let's duplicate this one right here variables two we can duplicate that and we're going to change that to piping inlet and here for the expression we're going to change that from d1 to d2 which is diameter 2 from our global definitions parameters so if we go back to our global definitions parameter you see d1 that's 10 centimeters and d2 that's 20 centimeters so let's go back to variable is true under definitions so you can see the expression that i just showed you in the global definitions parameters it's here as well all right so let's duplicate this one variable is true and we're going to Call this one the outlet. Okay. So if we go back to variables one, we have main, variables two, we have heater, variables three, we have inlet, variables four, we have outlet. Okay, so variables three and four we have a diameter of 20 centimeters, and variables one and two we have a diameter of 10 centimeters. So D1, 10, D2, 20. There was one, so all these are 10 centimeters. Same here. These are 20 centimeters in regards to the inner di diameter of our pipe. Okay, I hope that explains it properly. All right, let's now create a maximum operator to be used in the results analyst okay so let's go back to definitions and 
we're going to go down to non-local couplings and we're going to choose maximum where we have source selection geometric entity level let's choose edge and for the selection let's choose all edges now let's create our materials Note that the pipe walls are made of structural steel. The fluid inside the pipe is water and the surrounding medium is air. So let's navigate to our home toolbar, add material, build in. Let's add structural steel. Let's right click on that, add to component one. Right click on air, add to component one right click on water liquid at the component one let's go back to our model builder let's select air for the geometric entity selection let's choose pipe pipe in main for water let's choose all edges let's close this and now we need to navigate down to pipe flow but before we do that let's minimize some of these things makes it a little bit difficult to read and to navigate all right so on the pipe flow we have fluid properties let's select that model inputs we have temperature user define let's change this to 50 degrees celsius okay that looks okay right there and let's go down to pipe properties Pipe shape, entry not a circular, the friction model you can leave as church hill, and for the surface roughness, let's change that to as if we have commercial steel, yeah, 0 0.046. And for the inner diameter, let's change that to DI. That should be lowercase DI. Okay. And for the pipe mechanics, let's go down to that right here. So let's just close pipe flow for a while. And let's focus on pipe mechanics. Let's click on fluid and pipe materials. and for the pipe material let's go down here okay so on the pipe properties pipe material let's change that to structural steel for the pipe cross section let's select that and let's choose Pipe shape that would be circular. Outer diameter would be that would be di plus hpw, and for the inner diameter we just need to enter di. Now let's add the gravity force acting on the fluid. Kindly note that the force defined here will only be accounted for when computing the flow in the pipeline. So let's go back to our model builder and let's click on pipe flow. Let's expand that. So we're going to work with pipe flow again. So if we right click on pipe flow, we have volume force right here. 
and again before I move forward I just want to let you know that you can select these things from from here as well okay so if you come to your physics or whatever you're working here in the model builder the, some of them are also defined here you can come here and work with them so for, uh, for this case I could have come here I could have expand edges and I could have select volume for some here as well but for me right now it's just easier to come here and and do such so let's work with our volume force so we're going to choose all edges and now we need to add a pump so we continue to work from here pipe flow and let's add a pump and for the pump the pump is right across here so that would be point 0.9 it's easy to select or you can come back to your selection list and select it here and click add okay but you can just select it here as well because it's easy to locate at this particular point in time so that's our pump we need to add our pump specification so here we have pump direction that is okay and we need to change the type so let's change that to pressure increase and let's enter dp here now let's navigate back to our global definitions parameters so let's expand that parameters and here our dp which is our pipe increase and that is 0.5 atmosphere or 5663 pascals so let's navigate back down to pump so that looks okay now let's add our internal pressure lock so let's right click on pipe flow and internal pressure lock let's select that and for the point that will be eight so that would be just here so let's select it from this point at this particular moment because it's easy to select now let's define two t junctions in the pipeline so we have two T junctions I think one is here and one is here okay so let's right click on pipe flow let's select T junction and let's now clear manual control selection so let's clear that a box right here now let's create our bends so pipe flow right click and let's select bend right here and for our selection let's click here paste selection and we're going to paste points for all our bends and we're going to click ok note that i'll provide this text file so you can just copy it and paste it inside okay so if you know this in our graphics window you can see these are all of the areas where bends are except for where we have our T junctions and the previous selected points so we are still working with the pipe flow physics so let's go down to initial values and where we have transcendental velocity let's enter negative one okay so now we need to add the gravity force acting on the pipeline know that the weights of both the pipe walls and the containing fluid will be taken into account 
in the force computations. So we're going to work with the pipe mechanics to create such. So let's close pipe flow and let's right click on pipe mechanics and let's add gravity. And now our gravity has been added to our pipe mechanics physics. Let's right click on pipe mechanics again and let's add a fixed constraint. And for this fixed constraint, we need to select point 0.8. I mean, the point 0.8 should be just across here. So you can select that. Now we need to define other mechanical constraints applied to the pipeline by using unidirectional supports. So let's stay in pipe mechanics. Let's right click on that and prescribe this placement rotation. We're going to add that and let's select base selection. And we're gonna enter or paste all those values, okay? And as mentioned previously, I'll provide this text file where you can copy these points. At these locations, the pipeline is supported, which will constrain its downward motion. So in our prescribed displacement rotation settings, let's navigate down to the displacement in the Z direction right here. And we're going to change it from free to limited. And for the Z minimum, we're going to enter zero okay and we're going to navigate back to pipe mechanics right click on that and we're going to create another prescribed displacement rotation now we're going to select point 62 where we have a T junction so we need to restrict the possible horizontal motion for this T junction right here, 62. And for the maximum, so for the X direction, we're going to change that to limited. And for the maximum, we're going to enter 0.01. Okay, and we need to create another prescribed displacement rotation. So, pipe mechanics, right click and create another one. And here we need to select this point, which is 50, because there can be a possible sway, swaying of the pipe. We need to restrict that. And for the coordinate system, we're going to select system from geometry to. Okay. And for the X2 direction, we're going to change that to limited. Okay, so displacement in X2 direction and for the maximum value we're going to key in zero for the x3 direction we're going to change that to limited and for the maximum we're going to key in 0 0.01 and for the minimum we're going to be in negative 0 0.01. Okay. 
okay before we add the heat transfer interface we'll generate a solver sequence note that the pipe flow and the pipe mechanics interfaces added thus far to the model are unidirectional directionally coupled thus the flow will affect the structural displacement but not vice versa the auto generated solver sequence will use a segregated solver with two groups where the fluid flow and the structural displacement are computed consecutively so let's close material let's close global definitions let's close pipe mechanics and let's focus on our study so let's right click on study and let's select show default solver now let's navigate to our home toolbar and let's add physics and we are going to add a heat transfer physics so let's expand heat transfer right here and let's select heat transfer in pipes so let's scroll down and right here we have heat transfer in pipe so let's right click on that and add to component one now let's close this and let's select heat transfer let's scroll down to heat convection and conduction and where we have transcendental velocity let's choose transcendental velocity and let's navigate to our type properties so right here in heat transfer we also have type properties let's click on that and for the pipe shape let's choose circular and for the inner diameter let's key in di for the friction model we leave churchill for the surface roughness let's choose commercial steel 0.046 millimeters let's stay in our heat transfer in pipes physics right click on that and we are going to choose a heat source so let's add this heat source for our heat source we're going to paste some more values and i'll provide those in a text file as well here are they so we copy these paste them inside here okay so our heat source are here in this area right here okay so under heat source general source where we have our value let's enter uppercase Q Let's now create a wall heat transfer. So right click on heat transfer in pipes. Select wall heat transfer. And we're gonna paste these values as well. So click on paste selection, control V. Okay, let's zoom back out, but we can zoom to extents. Let's navigate to our global definitions parameters and we're going to enter text in the 
while heat transfer right here so you can just see that the expression is 20 degrees celsius and that's the external temperature so while heat transfer right here i'm gonna have a this t T. so that's it now let's stay in heat transferring pipes and we're going to continue to work with wall heat transfer so let's right click on that and we're going to add a uh, internal film resistance so let's select that now we need to add an, an external film resistance as well so let's right click on wall heat transfer external film resistance and let's go down to the specification and we're going to choose a natural so an external natural convection okay and the surrounding fluid that would be air now let's specify the thermal expansion of the pipe walls caused by the temperature increase and variation so let's close the transparent pipes and we are going back to our pipe mechanics so let's expand that let's navigate down to fluid and pipe materials Let's right click on that and we're going to select thermal expansion so under model input this is going to be temperature or T and for this one this is going to be user defined and we're going to enter text okay so let's close these again and we're going to focus on our study so let's close the model physics as well so we're going to focus on study we'll update the dependent variables in the solver which will create a new segregated group for the variables added by the heat transfer interface so let's expand study Let's expand solution. So solve the configurations. Let's expand solution. Let's expand dependent variables. And let's expand stationary solver as well. So dependent variables, let's right click that. And we're going to select update variables. Just make this a little bigger for now. And under stationary solver, let's click on segregated and let's expand that. Let's scroll down. Let's select segregated step one and let's call it heat. Let's expand method and termination let's scroll down where we have the non-linear method let's change that to automatic newton let's navigate to the tolerance factor here let's leave it as one and the number of iterations let's enter 50 Now let's move this just after pipe flow so we can right click on that and select move up so we'll have our pipe flow computation then the heat computation then the pipes mechanic computation. Now let's right click on study right here and we're gonna select show default plots let's 
so let's scroll down and you see that generated some parts here let's close our study to keep this nice and neat now let's focus on these results so let's expand temperature let's click on line one so for the units that will be degree c i we can simply come here and select degree c and for the coloring and style the radius scale factor let's select that and let's key in three so what we've just done there is prepare a flag to be shown during the parametric sweep computation okay let's minimize these for now let's expand study again and let's click on stationary let's expand results while solving and let's check this plot box and for the plot group let's choose temperature the pressure increase at the pump will gradually decrease from 2 atmosphere down to 0 0.25 atmosphere let's scroll down a little bit and we have study extensions let's expand that let's select auxiliary sweep now let's select add and where we have the one pipe diameter we're going to change that to dp pressure increase and we're going to change this to atmosphere and for our range we're going to enter this so the parameter parameter value list we have range 2 comma minus 0 0.25 comma 0 0.25 and close the, the bracket It's always a good practice to save before you make your computation. And let's navigate back to our study window, our study toolbar, and let's compute our simulation. So during the simulation, you can see the different iterations that's happening so at this moment it's at 1.75 atmosphere now it's down to 1.5 atmosphere uh, it started at 2 and it will count its way down to 0 0.5 0 0.25 actually all right now that our computation is completed let's close our study and let's focus on our results so let's right click on results and let's add a 1d plot group Let's take this one depart group above pressure. Okay. So let's call that maximum temperature. All right. And let's scroll down to the, the legend. 
Okay, we're going to uncheck Show Legends. Okay. Now, let's right click on maximum temperature and let's select global and for our global expression we going to keep in that expression for the units we want it to be degrees celsius and for the description we're going to call it maximum temperature okay now we're going to hit plot okay. so here you can see our our temperature increase or maximum temperature across each change of atmosphere okay now we need to add or create our maximum van Mesa stress to do that we'll right click on maximum temperature and we're going to duplicate that let's drop it just below maximum temperature here we can close these so make sure maximum temperature one is selected let's scroll up to the top and we're going to call that maximum van Mises stress for the global global one let's select that and for the expression we're going to key in this expression right here and for the description we're going to call it maximum van Mises stress okay and let's hit plot so you can see our maximum van Mises stress across each atmosphere pressures okay so if we go back to our maximum temperature you can see that at 0 0.5 our temperature and maximum temperature at that point is approximately 60.5 degrees celsius the same for the van Mises stress at 0 0.5 you can see we we are at our lowest value as well okay we can state that both quantities assume their lowest value around 0 0.5 atmosphere let's focus on our pressure results let's make this a little smaller so this as well let's zoom to extents for our data for our parameter value let's change that to 0 0.5 the reason why we are changing that to 0 0.5 is because the quantities reaches their local minimum value for the pressure increase of 0 0.5 atmosphere there are many different iterations here but we work with 0 0.5 to plot our remaining results okay so let's expand this let's click on line one and for our expression we're going to leave 
it as P and for our units we're going to change that to atmosphere for our radio scale factor which falls under coloring and style we're going to select the checkbox and we're going to change that to 3 so this shows us the fluid pressure distribution for the pressure increase of 0.5 atmosphere at the pump okay kindly note if yours doesn't change make sure you hit on plot okay now let's minimize that and let's select velocity for our velocity let's change the parameter value and as mentioned earlier we're going to focus on 0.5 okay for the color coloring and style let's scroll down so we need to expand and select arrow line one our positioning right here the number of arrows and let's try let's try 75 outside here coloring and style I'm thinking about using the double arrows for this one and now let's center those and for the scale factor let's select this box and let's enter two okay uh, maybe we can try let's try 80 Okay, let's hit plot this shows us the flow velocity field for the pressure increase of 0.5 atmosphere at the, at the pump okay let's close velocity let's click on stress so let's change this to 0 0.5 let's expand stress let's click on line 1 let's scroll up for the unit let's choose megapascal let's scroll down for the radius factor let's get in three and let's expand line one let's click the formation and let's scroll down to scale we have scale, scale factor, let's click on that and let's enter one and then let's hit plot okay you can see our van means the stress in the deformed pipeline for the pressure increase of 0.5 atmosphere at the pump the stress distribution shown here you can see that the maximum van Mises stress is about 100 mega pascals which is far below the yield strength of the material so let's close stress let's focus on temperature i'm going to change that to 0 0.5 and let's hit plot So here, the temperature distribution over a pipeline for that value above the parameter 
thus the temperature increase is almost 30 degrees Celsius above the environment temperature. The performance can be considered acceptable since the total rate of removed heat is approximately 26 kilowatts. So let's navigate to our home toolbar, add predefined plots under study one solution. Let's expand pipe mechanics. Let's expand section forces and let's select total bending moment. Right click and add plot. Let's close this. Let's change the parameter value to 0 0.5. And let's expand total bending moment. Let's click line one. Let's scroll up for the units. Let's choose kilonewtons. And for the color and style, where we have radius scale factor, let's change that to three. Let's expand the line. Let's click on deformation. And for the scale factor, let's select that checkbox and let's key in one and let's hit pop. Zoom to extends. So here we have the total bending moment for the pressure increase of 0.5 atmosphere at the pump. Now let's navigate back to our home toolbar. We're going to add another predefined plot. So this one, we're going to expand pipe mechanics again, section forces, and we're going to select total shear force. I click add flat. We're going to close that. Let's close total bending moment. Let's expand total shear force. Let's select. Make sure it's selected. We're going to change this to 0 0.5. We're going to select line. We're going to scroll up. We're going to change the unit to kilonewtons. For the radius scale factor, make sure it's selected and we're going to key in 3. Okay, and we're going to expand line 1, select the formation, select scale factor, and we're going to key in 1, and we're going to hit plot. So it extends. And finally, we can see. We have our total shear force for the pressure increase of 0 0.5 atmosphere at the pump. So let's close that. If we go back here, as mentioned before, you can change these values and plot them. Or you can simply come here and you can just iterate to the next value and then hit plot. Okay. So this concludes our tutorial. Thanks for tuning in and bye for now. Take care.